My love affair with teeth started in 1971. Although I'd wanted to be a medical doctor, not a tooth doctor, I fell in love with the beauty of teeth, the elegance of their lines, and how cleverly they marry form to function. At times, though, like a capricious lover, teeth would make my life so utterly miserable that I threatened to leave the relationship, quit dentistry. But then, a beaming child whose smile I'd just restored would have me fall in love all over again. Today, still smitten, I'm here to share teeth's secret purpose, to be the sentinels of our body. Teeth are amazing engineering marvels with features and edges like no other body parts. Their unique structure has even been copied by the race car industry to enhance performance and safety. With enamel more than two and a half times harder than bones, teeth are designed to last a lifetime, decades. But unlike bones and all other body parts, when diseased or injured, teeth don't heal. My bold hypothesis is that this seemingly unfortunate disadvantage for oral health is actually an advantage for overall health. To analyze this proposition, we must first examine two major trends that unfolded during the second half of the 20th century. Fluoride in your drinking water to prevent tooth decay and low-fat foods to prevent heart disease. How well are these two strategies working now? Well, <laughs> the demand for dentists is increasing more rapidly than the demand for all other occupations. And heart disease is the number one cause of death, both for men and women. In 1951, water fluoridation became policy in the United States, a policy that proved so successful at preventing tooth decay that in December 1983, the New York Times reported a public health expert's prediction that tooth decay in children and young adults would be gone by the turn of the century. Yep. <laughs> These experts didn't know that a trade group calling itself the Sugar Research Foundation had meddled with science. In 2015, dentist turned researcher Kristen Kearns exposed documents dating back to the 60s, proving that the Sugar Research Foundation paid Harvard University nutritionists to counter science linking sugar to coronary heart disease and to instead recommend a dietary reduction in fat and cholesterol intake. This gave birth to the 70s low-fat diets and processed foods touted to prevent heart disease and promote weight loss. But low-fat means low flavor, a problem food manufacturers quickly solved with the addition of more and more sugar, which has since been proven more addictive than cocaine. Meanwhile, dentistry entered an era of exciting and distracting changes. There appeared white composite fillings so much nicer than silver amalgams. Implants enabled dentists to restore function like never before. Adhesives and new porcelains to restore teeth to their natural beauty. The work of a dentist no longer was only about drilling and filling decaying teeth. I could actually make someone's life better with my dentistry. And I did. And it felt good. I was also learning that teeth are terribly fickle. Remember what I pointed out earlier? Teeth don't heal? Well, that means fillings fail. <laughs> A lesson all dentists are reminded of throughout their careers. Like thousands of other dentists, my approach to failing fillings was to take more continuing education courses. 
I prided myself for being at the leading edge of my profession. But while my colleagues and I were learning everything new and better in dentistry, our gains against tooth decay plateaued. And eventually, the rates of tooth decay started going up again. Despite the increasing number of communities fluoridating their water and the widespread use of fluoridated toothpaste and mouthwash. Nevertheless, we pushed for more fluoride. And guess what? In October 1999, the Center for Disease Control named community water fluoridation one of the top 10 public health achievements of the 20th century. We celebrated! But does tooth decay happen because there's not enough fluoride in the water? Or could it be that tooth decay happens because there's too much sugar in our diets? Now that 74% of the United States population has access to fluoridated water, why then is tooth decay still the number one childhood disease four times more common than asthma, when it was supposed to be completely gone now? More troubling is the corresponding data that since sugar has found its way into every single aisle of our grocery store, there has been an alarming increase in the rates of obesity, diabetes, and non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases in children, in children. And the obligation to treat these diet-related diseases falls upon family physicians and pediatricians, while dentists focus on the other diet-related disease, tooth decay, <laughs> separately. <laughs> We've got to stop this right now. Since when are teeth separate from the rest of the body? Not once in my whole career have I seen a set of teeth walk into my office without their human owner. <laughs> Although at times my job would have been so much easier, you know. <laughs> no brains, no opinions. <laughs> but now let's talk about you. When you take your teeth to your dentist, what problems are you hoping to solve or avoid? How different are the concerns you bring into your physician's office from the concerns you bring into your dentist's office? Do you ever talk about your teeth with your physician? Perhaps you should. And here's the most important reason why. Your teeth are the best, the most accessible, the most obvious early warning system for predicting future breakdowns elsewhere in the body decades before they occur. Now, how about transforming a dental visit into a whole health advantage? Imagine for a moment your child's dentist, after finding some white spots on a few teeth, not even full-blown tooth decay yet, with genuine concern for your child's health, prompts you and a dental medical team to troubleshoot why enamel the hardest tissue in your child's whole body is breaking down. Thus, leading to the interception of not only full-blown tooth decay, but also other diet-related diseases before they manifest. You see, your child's liver, heart, pancreas, with their capacity to heal, can cope much longer than teeth. Not forever, but longer than teeth with the stresses of a toxic diet. This means that an early intervention triggered by teeth can actually prevent permanent damage to other organs and tissues in the body. According to Hippocrates, the best medicine is to teach people how to not need it. Addressing 
the population's essential needs for oral health education. We'll do more to improve overall health than enrolling more people in health insurance programs or removing barriers to health care as we currently know it. Because health begins right here. Our bodies are so much more than a sophisticated aggregate of separate functioning parts. Teeth don't function in isolation from the rest of the body, but rather they are in a symbiotic relationship with it. Our teeth are meant to be the sentinels of our body. The statistics on sugar are truly alarming. 200 years ago, the average American consumed 10 teaspoons of sugar every five days. Today, we unknowingly consume the same amount every seven hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it any wonder that fluoride can't keep up? Today, there's sugar in almost all processed foods, including foods you would never suspect, like soups and sausages. Check the labels next time you're at the supermarket. Sugar figures as the third and often the second ingredient in almost all breakfast cereals. And in granola bars, promoted as healthy and cleverly packaged in recycled cardboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sugar is the number one ingredient. Feed this to your child for breakfast? You might as well give him a chocolate bar. Is this how you want your child to start his day? Unless we agree that tooth decay is a serious sentinel event, unless we treat tooth decay from a whole body's perspective, and unless we raise the alarm every time we see tooth decay in a child's mouth and activate teamwork, to address the cause before we even mention drilling and filling, our healthcare system will continue to fail us and will continue to cost trillions of dollars for the treatment of preventable, diet-related, chronic diseases. Health is a collective responsibility. We can no longer be the silent witnesses to the ravages caused by processed foods and beverages. Blaming and criticizing others doesn't work. We must come together, brave enough and wise enough to start a revolution. Here's how you can join me. Parents, Choose fresh over processed foods every time you can. And stop buying all processed foods where sugar figures as one of the first three ingredients. And this is really important. However, <laughs> this admonition is complicated by the fact that sugar comes under at least 61 different names. <laughs> Learn them all so you can best avoid them. And remember, a breakfast with no added sugar is the best way to start the day. Family physicians and pediatricians, preventive dentistry does not require a special dental chair. Have a look at teeth, connect them to body, and remind young parents of the non-negotiable rule of no added sugar under the age of two. Teachers, make a pledge right now to eliminate all candy rewards from your classroom. Hoteliers, that chocolate on the pillow? How about a toothbrush instead? <laughs> yeah. Bankers, those lollipops, <sighs> that has to stop. <laughs> Dentists, my colleagues and friends, we are the physicians of the mouth, and it is up to us to start and lead this revolution. Start talking about tooth decay as a serious sentinel event that requires so much more than just drilling and filling. Share your knowledge and concerns in your community with teachers, parents, physicians, pediatricians, and make it a goal that 
any new decay will be the last one you treat in that patient's mouth. You'll still be plenty busy replacing filling, failing fillings. <laughs> Everyone, our capacity to recognize teeth as amazing engineering marvels designed to be the sentinels of our body will connect teeth to health in such a powerful way that it will change the course of human health, saving trillions of healthcare dollars, and it will save lives. If it feels good to save a tooth, imagine how good it will feel to save a life. Please join my revolutions. Thank you.